Here's the time Allen Iverson taught Kobe Bryant, but then Kobe Bryant retaliated in the most ridiculous way possible. And um, I love him and I respect him. This story is just crazy. As we know, Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant are two of the greatest shooting guards to have ever stepped on the hardwood. Kobe is a five-time NBA champion, whilst Allen Iverson never won an NBA championship. Kobe has something that I don't have. I mean, Kobe has two championships, and that's what I want. I play with a certain attitude, a certain aggression, uh, and a competitive spirit, and a tenacity that we both share. And uh, I think that's even more intriguing than, than our differences. So right now, you can't even talk about me in the same sentence with Kobe because of just that. There's been many debates about if Allen Iverson was paired up with a player like Shaquille O'Neal, how many he would have won, and maybe if he had a sidekick, that he'd be ranked up higher on some people's all-time list. But you can't go back and change the past. What we can do is relive the past. And Kobe Bryant once relayed a story about the time Allen Iverson torched him in 1999. Kobe Bryant got his revenge just one year later, and the rest is history. Here's the entire story. I combine interviews together with videos, highlights, and clips to conduct a story that all flows together for you to enjoy. You guys seem to love these videos, so I'd appreciate if you guys could leave a like on this video to show your support. It literally takes two seconds of your time, and it would really help my channel out. If you're new around here and you enjoy these types of videos, feel free to subscribe. And lastly, a channel dedicated to Kobe Bryant is a channel called Rahul Presents Kobe. He made a similar video, which I included clips from his video, where he read out passages from a Kobe Bryant article called Obsession is Now. Natural. I'm going to use his voice as the commentary for Kobe Bryant's article because I saw how dedicated of a fan he truly was to the Black Mamba. But full credit goes to him and be sure to check out his channel. With that said, I hope you're all feeling safe and let's get started. I had a bet with my cousin how many times he's gonna hit the floor tonight. That was only one. That's, that's the first time. That's it. I got three. I, hard, I got three. The story begins during the 1996-1997 NBA season, Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson's rookie year. Obviously Kobe Bryant was entering a Los Angeles Lakers team with Shaquille O'Neal and an already made team. Allen Iverson was heading to the 76ers, a team that basically was built around no one, except him, the answer. It was basically a team to just build around Allen Iverson and let him do whatever he wanted to do on the court, and he took full advantage of it. Kobe Bryant started off his piece, Obsession is Natural, by saying, In a game on November 12, 1996, Kobe Bryant's rookie year, he saw Allen Iverson drop 35 points on the New York Knicks in a win at the Garden. Kobe, on the other hand, was sitting on the bench that very same night, watching his team face the Houston Rockets. Kobe had played a total of 5 minutes and scored just 2 points, and whilst he played behind veteran guards like Byron Scott, Eddie Jones, Robert Ory, and Cedric Sabalos, this ate at Kobe, the fact that he was watching other rookies go out there and showcase their talents whilst he was sitting on the bench. He said, When I checked into my hotel room later that night and saw the 35 on Sports Center, I lost it. I flipped the table, threw the chairs, broke the TV. I thought I had been working hard. Five minutes, two points, I needed to work harder. I did. Fast forward three years later, Kobe Bryant was starting to emerge. He wasn't that rookie with potential coming off the bench anymore. He was starting to find his role in the Lakers offense. He wasn't lying when he said he had to improve. And his quote was, I did. And he sure did that. He was averaging 20 points on the year, a five point increase from the previous season as the new Los Angeles Lakers starting shooting guard. He was finally getting the minutes that he deserved after putting in the hard work. The Lakers and 76ers only played once that season, but Kobe was eager to show his nemesis what he could do on the court, now that the Lakers were giving him more minutes, and he was the starting shooting guard for the most storied franchise the league had ever seen. He was also playing alongside Shaquille O'Neal, the most dominant center in the NBA. But in that game, it was all about the answer who not only torched Kobe Bryant, but the entire Los Angeles Lakers roster, which included the most dominant center in the NBA in Shaquille O'Neal, Glenn Rice, who was one of the most prolific three-point shooters in the league, and of course Kobe Bryant, who couldn't handle the answer on this night. The Philadelphia 76ers won that game 105-90, to and with Kobe Bryant playing 40 minutes that game, he wanted to show the answer what he was about. Instead, Allen Iverson dominated him. 
Kobe went on to say, Philly put up 105 points to win by 15 behind Allen Iverson, who dropped 41, 5, and 10 with two steals, almost matching Kobe and Shaq's combined total of 46. Kobe had better than his season average with 23 points on 9 out of 16, and Shaq put up 23 of his own, but Kobe and Shaq had 5 turnovers apiece. This fueled Kobe once again. Not only was the answer coming into the league and dominating the league straight away, getting more minutes than Kobe, killing teams unlike Kobe, he was winning accolades, scoring titles, and leading his team. Kobe Bryant, on the other hand, was playing as the second option. But unlike Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant in their rookie years, Kobe Bryant had the opportunity in this game. He played 40 minutes, and he still couldn't control the answer on this night. And this fueled Kobe to become one of the greatest shooting guards of all time. With Allen Iverson dropping 41 points on his head, getting the win by 15, and outplaying Kobe Bryant on this night, this particular night on March 19th, 1999, Allen Iverson changed Kobe Bryant and turned him into the Black Mamba. Kobe Bryant was already obsessed about the game of basketball, but this particular night made him obsessive about Allen Iverson. And that's what the article is about. Working harder wasn't enough. I had to study this guy maniacally. I obsessively read every article and book I could find about AI. I obsessively watched every game he had played, going back to the IUPU All-American game. I obsessively studied his every success and his every struggle. I obsessively searched for any weakness I could find. Not only did Kobe study game film of Iverson and look for his tendencies and flaws, but he found himself watching great white sharks hunting seals off the coast of South Africa. Kobe recognized that there was something to learn from the way the sharks would use patience, timing, and angles to continuously catch their prey by surprise. But Kobe explained how he studied great white sharks to figure out how to stop Allen Iverson. I'm serious, you should read it. So, as you can imagine, the next game, it was on. Allen Iverson vs Kobe Bryant. There was no way that Kobe was going to allow Allen Iverson to have the same performance of last game. He had studied Allen Iverson. He read every book, everything he could find about Allen Iverson to stop him. He even watched great white sharks hunting seals off the coast of South Africa. And now he was able to face the man that had killed him just a season earlier. But at this stage, Allen Iverson had 16 points heading into the second half. He was on his way to 32 points. And the Philadelphia 76ers and the Los Angeles Lakers were tied, 38 at the half. On February 20th, 2000, Phil Jackson put Kobe Bryant on Allen Iverson after Iverson dropped 16 in the first half. This is what happened next. The Los Angeles Lakers this season had a new head coach, Phil Jackson, who was the mastermind. He had coached the greatest shooting guard in NBA history. He knew what it took, and he knew that putting Kobe Bryant on Allen Iverson would fuel him. And with Allen Iverson dominating Kobe in the first matchup, this was payback time. After Kobe switched onto Iverson, he never scored again. AI went 0 for 10 in the second half, finishing the game 7 for 25 for 16 points, 8 assists, and 5 turnovers. Kobe Bryant finished the game with 18 points, 7 assists, and 5 blocks with the Los Angeles Lakers getting the win by three points and Allen Iverson being shut out the game in the second half. Kobe was happy about this game and the win, but he was still mad about Allen Iverson dominating him in the first matchup. Uh, Iverson had 16 points in the half and then Kobe guarded in the second half and Iverson finished with 16. He said, I swore from that point on to approach every matchup as a matter of life and death. No one was going to have that kind of control over my focus ever again. And no one ever did. Kobe Bryant became one of the most elite defenders in the NBA, which still sometimes goes unrecognized. And it was very rare that a player got the best of Kobe Bryant. Throughout the next few seasons, Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson had some heated battles. They met up in the NBA Finals in 2001, with the Los Angeles Lakers winning it all. Many years later, once Iverson was retired, he said he considered Kobe to be in his Mount Rushmore and during his Hall of Fame speech, he thanked Kobe for always bringing the greatest out of him when they matched up head to head. Kobe, um, true competitor. Who's on your short list of best competitors you've faced? Um, Michael Jordan, Allen Iverson are the two that come to mind immediately. And AI was much the same. I mean, from opening tip to the end, I mean, this guy was just going and going and going. 
and he'd always put you in jeopardy. So those two guys are the most competitive I faced. But he bought everything out of me on the basketball court, and I appreciate him for that. Yeah, it got to a point where um, we were, um, we basically were um, at the top of all game. You know, an AI is a competitor. He drove me to, to um, be as obsessive, more obsessive about the game because I had to figure out how to solve that problem. You know, people nowadays realize how great you were as a player and uh, you know, how big of a problem you were for, for defenses. Um, at one point. And um, it was always a war. You know, obviously, um, he was too big for me. You know what I mean? So I, I couldn't guard him. But he would guard me. Um, you knew you had to come with your, your best. Well, no half stepping. He coming to compete, coming to fight. Got the biggest heart in the world. Ultimate competitor. And um, I said it a couple days ago, he bought everything out of me. And uh, I mean, we had some war. Both players had the ultimate respect for one another. The ultimate competitive nature between the two forced them to have these heated battles. The one time Allen Iverson got the better of Kobe, Kobe Bryant wanted revenge. Allen Iverson was the reason that Kobe Bryant ended up being the Black Mamba. The game in 1999 changed Kobe Bryant's career for the better. And Kobe Bryant respected how great of a player Allen Iverson truly was. Only the greats recognized the greats. Today, Allen Iverson sometimes goes a little bit unappreciated, but Kobe Bryant always stood out for Allen Iverson, calling him the ultimate competitor. It's sad that we will never see Kobe Bryant back up Allen Iverson just one more time. It's sad that we'll never see Kobe Bryant share this story with the words from his mouth, but I'm glad that he wrote this article in 2017 to give praise to Allen Iverson and to show the Black Mamba mentality. Let me know what you think about this story down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, I'd greatly appreciate if you guys could drop a like to show your support. Let's aim for a thousand likes. If you're new around here and you enjoy NBA content, be sure to hit that subscribe button for weekly NBA content. And be sure to check out the Rahul Presents Kobe channel. The link is in the description. It's been your boy Smith. I am out. Peace.